makes a YouTube video more dramatic than having a visit to the emergency room. So if you can't find a turtle that's flipped on its back to help it back over, at least send your girlfriend or fiance up a coconut tree and get her critically damaged so we can spice up the video a bit. Seems like to get over a million views on YouTube these days, the title of the video needs to be something to do with remote island camping or catch and cook. The thumbnail needs to include a scantily clad woman and you need to have a decked out offshore battle wagon. Well, the captain has decided it's finally time to cash in. So we're up in Queensland, there's an island just over there and Ali has brought her skimpiest bikini. Now, where do we leave the GoPro? So here's the plan. We're gonna ditch the expensive camera gear and the cameraman. Sorry, Nick, you gotta walk home. And from here on out, it's POV only, baby. Ali and I are gonna load up the boat with fuel, supplies, and actually see if we can survive out on the islands for a few days. We're gonna eat only fresh fish, and if we can't start a fire, don't worry. This SL27 has its own electric cooker, but we'll keep that on the DL. If we can't catch a fish, that's fine too, because this rig also comes with its own fridge, which we've preloaded with supplies and even some prawns. In terms of accommodation, we have a tent for those authentic vibes, but nah, we're probably just gonna sleep in the Whitley's decadent double V berth. Other features you'll find on the Whitley include a 19 inch Simrad NSO Evo 3 with a one kilowatt through hull transducer lithium batteries with a fathom management system, slide out electric rear facing sunshade, an electric anchor winch, and a molded live bait tank. Oh, and she's got a timber free foam filled hull. She actually tows quite nicely. She's 3.1 ton dry and has a 2.49 meter beam. So everything is street legal. First impressions of the SL27 are awesome. She's got a 23 degree dead rise and an aggressive reverse chine that keeps the windscreen dry and the ride super stable, even with all our gear. Fuel wise, she's carrying a whopping 380 liters underfloor plus an extra 200 liter secondary, which should be more than enough for a stint out on the reef. It also has a 60 liter freshwater tank, so Ali might even be lucky enough to score a quick shower at the end of each day. Oh, and don't forget, there's also a head with a 60 litre holding tank too. It's got a V8 Mercury 300 horsepower single outboard, but you can also rig this boat with twins, so it'll be interesting comparison between those two. This sea legend is seriously decked out for fishing and for family as well. It really is the best of both worlds. These two awesome rear facing seats, really comfortable helm seat and first mate. Apparently they were actually styled off a of Bentley, which is pretty cool. There's so much storage in this boat. I'm actually scared when I give this boat back, I'm gonna lose half of my tackle because I've forgotten which hatch I've put it in. There's tuna tubes, a dive door, stacks of floodlights everywhere. We've even got a TV on board and a Simrad radar. It's a real burger with a lot. Some other fishy features you'll find on this boat are a great bait board. It is massive and it's also got four rod holders and two drink holders on it, loving that. We've got tow rails down the port side of the boat and we've even got some in-boat rod storage as well so you don't have to leave all your gear exposed out to the elements up top. And we've got a fully lockable cabin so we can stow all our gear in there, all my expensive stick baits and stellas and lock it up and actually sleep at night without thinking who's breaking into our Whitley. This boat pumps as well. Every flat surface has got a JL audio speaker in it. There's a subwoofer right by the captain's seat. There's a couple of little tweeters up in the hard top and you've also got some in the cabin too, so it pumps. So we've got a pretty solid trip ahead of us. We're traveling from the Gold Coast up towards Gladstone. From there, we'll run out about 40 nautical miles to the Bunker Island group. Uh, so we're finally actually en route to our proper fishing destination. We're heading out to the Bunker Island group. Water is blue, ocean is flat. I'm very excited. So the first day, the plan was Lady Musgrave. It's pretty well known Coral Cay out there with a nice little island in the middle of it. And when we arrived, Ali was pumped. She was like, gonna swim, get my bikini on. And I thought, before we hit in though, let's just have a quick little look at one of these nearby reefs. 
As soon as we pull the boat into neutral, a huge tiger shark comes swimming up to so the back funny. of the boat. Huge tiger shark. Oh. It's not that big. What? <laughs> and that was Ali done for the trip. No swimming. It was cancelled from then on. Anyway, we did some fishing around Lady Musgrave. It was actually quite tough. We worked our way out real far, just kept going further and further and further and worked our way out to the continental shelf, which was off Musgrave there, and found a wreck in like 110 metres of water with some awesome sign on the sounder and then got stuck into some amberjack. They were awesome fun to catch, uh, especially in that sort of depth of water. I was cactus after reeling them in. Oh, what is it? It's an amberjack. <laughs> oh. That's not doing me dinner, no. Oh god, amberjack. <laughs> out of 100 metres. These are part of the kingfish family. That's why they yeah, fight. Yeah, they look just like them. That's why they fight so That's hard. That's crazy. It's like it's sister or yeah. something. I'm going to let this guy go, see if we can catch something better. <laughs> but after that, it was time to uh, find a nice little spot for the night. So we pulled into Lady Musgrave, into the lagoon, dropped the pick and set up for a pretty epic sunset meal and our first night aboard the SL27. All right, it's a captain's log, day one out on the water and we've discovered this YouTubing thing's actually a little bit harder than we first thought. I think we have to give a little bit more respect to you guys because trying to drive the boat, trying to fish, trying to get the GoPro, trying to get my stills camera, it's actually a bit of a mission. It's really nice anchorage. Sweet lagoon, fully surrounded by coral, um, and there's a whole bunch of other sort of yachties over there behind us. But this is us for the night. All right, tuckers are served. <laughs> Not a bad backdrop, considering. Some sour cream. All right, tuning out after day one. It's time to enter the love nest. <laughs> <laughs> Going in. We woke up in the morning and we were still anchored, which is always a good sign and not on our side, on the reef. We had some pretty average weather coming through though, so we decided we're gonna get the high tide that morning at 1770 and regather. There was one area which I've always wanted to go to, but I've never actually managed to get there. And it was a pretty good bad weather option. It was the Keppel Island group, which is just off Yapoon. And there's a whole bunch of islands around there and you can always find a little bit of protection no matter what wind direction. Found a spot called Monkey Beach, which was like heaven. You've never seen anything like it. It's gotta be one of the highlights of the trip. Look. Pretty epic. So after an absolute pearl of a night at Monkey Beach, the next morning at 4.30, Ali and I were up. We were punching north, up to a few marks that the boys had given me, and eventually managed to catch an absolute, well, I didn't. Ali caught an absolute cracker of a coral trout. I thought I was reeling in a shark, but it was actually a beautiful coral trout, so I was wrong. Insanely beautiful though. What have you been saying about wanting your trout this whole trip? It's literally all I came here for was the trout. He's really pretty though. Caught him on a Paternoster rig with two pilchards. Probably the fish of the trip. Um, and it's the one fish on this trip Ali really wanted to catch. Another fish Ali really wanted to catch on this trip, and a fish that's been eluding her for a long time, is the long tail tuna. Ali was casting and I just thought I'd throw the massive stick bait just in case. Ali hooked up and I hooked up and typically she lost her long tail. <laughs> and as luck would have it, we found football fields worth of long tail tuna. Here you go, this is the one. Yeah, can't miss. Yeah, lock it up. Oh, this thing is buff. I need my... Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> Don't like stick baits. Wanted a metal lure. <laughs> Curse of the long tail. Where are your pants? I was sweating. Beauty. What's your foot? What's your foot? Oh my god, I caught one. <laughs> yes. I did it! <laughs> I finally did it! 
<laughs> Five years. <laughs> we were so stoked. We had coral trout and we had some sashimi for dinner. So we were fully stocked and ready to catch and cook. Pretty sweet spot we found. Definitely a solid morning. It's time to fillet. Are you ready for the reveal? I'm ready. Oh my God. That is insane. I like a good shot of that. It's beautiful. Ali's happy. She loves her sashimi. So happy. Oh my god. You got the soy sauce? Yeah. Happy girl. Mmm. Damn. Holy shit. God, it's good. <laughs> when the weather cleared, though, we were back out into action, cruised up to North Keppel Island this time, and then did a huge run up to Cape Manifold, which is supposed to be stick baiting heaven. We saw a bunch of Spanish mackerel jumping clean out of the water, but just couldn't connect with them, unfortunately. Trolled some lures, couldn't catch anything, and then went out for a deep drop out wide and ended up catching some smallmouth nanny guy, which was good because we were running low on the coral trout stocks. Up in Queensland, they say anything red is dead, so <laughs> it's going on the esky. This is a little endorphin jigging rod. So light, but it's so fun. Say reverse? Yeah. And a snap bait jig on it. Like 150 grams or something. It's so good for this reef fishing. Woohoo! Oh. Woo. So we've done a big 30 nautical mile run this morning up to a spot called Cape Manifold. It's supposed to be very fishy. Weather forecast is supposed to be banging. It's blowing like 20 knots now. So we made it back to our anchorage just before sunset and thought we'd go get a few photos on the beach. It was just, it was like heaven. And for the next two days, we had some great weather. We actually had a few friends who were gonna fly up and come explore the Keppels with us because we were hyping it up so much. So before our friends arrived, this was our last last night to, you know, hang out, explore the beach, have some nice food, have a couple of drinks. It was a real romantic evening of the trip. And that came to a crashing halt very, very quickly. All right, we have our first casualty of the trip. Went to the beach to get some, a uh, couple of photos of the boat, check out a couple of the palm trees. Told Ali to climb a palm tree and she climbed it and then fell and instead of letting go, she hugged it like a fireman's pole all the way to the bottom. And it's full of splinters. <laughs> See the wounds. <sighs> Look at the splinters. We're going to be here all night pulling out. Well, I didn't splinters. even get a coconut. <laughs> Cuts here. <laughs> grazes here. Oh, holy shit. Someone's coming over to us. I know. What to say? With an, about an hour worth of light left, we had a really tricky decision to make. Like, what do we do here? Do we stay the night? Do we like see if we can try to pull them out? Or do we get just go to the hospital? And although we didn't want to admit it to each other, it was, um, it was definitely time to go to the hospital. Don't climb palm trees, kids. Seriously though, we love watching you YouTube legends do your thing. Please don't come for us in the comments. We're all just jealous that you're chilling on the beach while we're sitting on the laptops putting together a bloody quarterly magazine. What were we thinking? So without any further ado, here are our top five Aussie YouTubers. Number five, Coastal Chaos with Bread and Towel are the YouTubing couple we hauled tiger sharks off the beach with. Since then, we've loved watching them smash the fish and good times around Harvey Bay. Number four, cool dude and cool dog, Timmy Turtle is always a good watch. We specifically loved watching him film his awkward encounter in the office with fisheries while he got fined. Number three, 
back to basics with Strick and Az. These guys are as authentic as they come. They seem like the sort of blokes the captain's crew could smash a couple of spice rums with after almost losing our boat off a deserted island. They were also featured in The Captain before they became superstars. Number two, Brody Moss, AKA Young Buds. He's the goat and his liquid cinema videos definitely inspired the captain's crew in our early days. Now he's known all around the world for his epic nature videos. Number one, it's gotta be Rocket Kid. Although I might be slightly biased because we've recently fished with him, but his super chill, under the radar ASMR vibes always seem to lure us into a 45 minute YouTube binge. All right, so that's it for me. Right now we're gonna go try and snap an awesome thumbnail photo. So you know what that means. Ali, get in that bloody bikini and get out here. We got work to do. Go on. 